Alrighty, welcome to Pathways into Public Interest Technology. You will be uh, part of a interactive workshop today and we'll try to balance speaking and doing so that uh, we don't spend this whole call talking at you. Uh, to begin, uh, make sure you click on that Miro link at some point and familiarize yourself with just like what Miro is. It's a interactive online whiteboard and this is how you'll be interacting throughout this session. And what we've got planned for today is some introductions about who we are, and then we'll have a chance for you to voice questions and concerns that you have about public interest technology, which we will address later in the session. And in the meantime, you'll be working on a pathway mapping exercise, which is interactive, and uh, we'll put you into breakout rooms to do this in smaller groups so that you don't have to like talk in this, in this larger group and then last week, we, we will conclude and share some different stories of pathways and people who are who have had different journeys into public interest tech. So to start with introductions, I'm gonna hand it off to Sam. Yeah, so a little bit about us. The people leading this workshop are myself, Emma and Arla and Ivy. Emma, Arla, Arla, and myself are from Pint, which is a public interest technology project team at Olin College of Engineering in Massachusetts. And Ivy is part of Impactful, which you're gonna hear a bit more in a few seconds. So that's who we are. So a bit more about Pint. We are a student-led project team, once again, at Olin. And we do things during the school year and also have a summer fellowship program. And the goal of this organization just as a whole is to empower each other to co-create the changes we want to see in the world. And we are completely student run. We have a faculty mentor, but we really, it is student led like first and foremost to make changes in public interest tech. And at the end of this, you can have access to these slides. So you can click on these links to learn more about Pint. We'll pass it off to Ivy to talk about Impactful. Hi everyone, I'm Ivy. I'm from Impactful, which is a platform that connects early career individuals such as students and recent graduates with opportunities in tech for social good. And we have a platform, um, a website that you can click on or you can go to the link below. And we also um, conduct research on the career pipeline to pick careers and organizations. So our next activity um, will be an interactive pathway mapping exercise. So we're gonna ask you to hop back into that same Miro board and navigate to the right a little bit to the voicing concern section. Um, and here we'd like you to take about three minutes just to document your concerns about engaging with public interest technology. So that could be like you're concerned about the financial stability of a career in um, public interest technology or the time commitment or anything else. And when you get there, it should look like this, which hopefully the screen is sharing. <laughs> And sorry for spamming the chat for those that, that have been here, but once someone joins, they don't have access to the prior chat history. Um, so if you have just joined, please navigate yourself to the mural with the tiny URL link. And we are under voicing concerns section and just add some sticky notes about what questions and concerns do you have about personally engaging with PIT. Feel free also to use this space to paste links or pictures or any any other um, any other things you'd like to to convey your thoughts.
So now we're going to hop back into the presentation. Um, the next activity will be an interactive, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, we're going to come back to address these concerns later in the workshop, but next we will be splitting you into breakout rooms of three to four people. Um, and this activity will be a group pathway brainstorm and mapping session. So if you zoom out a little more in Miro, you'll see a list of links to the right. And after you join your breakout room, uh, please navigate to the link that matches your breakout room number. And when you're there, you'll say hi to your breakout room and find a column of purple boxes to guide you through a mapping exercise. Um, we'll be sending broadcast messages out for time boxing and might hop in to check in or be a fly on the wall. And if any other concerns uh, come up throughout the breakout room exercise, feel free to toss them into the uh, concern board. So I think that um, the breakout rooms were split so that the hosts slash facilitators ended up in different breakout rooms. And for this part, while people are in breakout rooms, we will need Ivy Lee, one of the hosts, back for uh, a, a quick synthesis of the concerns so that we can address those later in the presentation. Got it. So you just need me to move Ivy? Yep. OK, great. To the main then, room? Or, yep. okay, one moment. I can't recall her. So you might have to message her. Okay. Like I can just move her to a different room. Sure. And then if we have new people joining, they might also. Yep. Happy to move them. Awesome. Hi everyone, we're just doing breakout rooms right now. So I will add you. Could you make sure I'm not in a breakout room? I'm actually a part of Impactful and helping Ivy the portion. Sure. Thank you. Hello, Earhart. Oh man, Mark Somerville is here too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Angela, could you move the person in breakout room? Uh, let's see, where, which room is it? Breakout room seven to breakout room six, please. Yep. Thanks. And it looks like eight two. Yeah. If you can also move Sam from eight to five. Yep. Seems like would be a good choice. Yep. Emma, me and Sam Datesman ended up in the same breakout room. Nice. <laughs> All right. I'm going to pop into another breakout room. You said eight to five, correct? Yes, eight or eight to just anywhere. Yeah, for some reason I'm like highlighting their name and they're not showing up. So like it doesn't show the option, but I will figure that out. Is there any chance that Ivy and I could be put into an empty breakout room for the two of us to talk? Sure. Um, Ivy has to be recalled, so oh, it, as, as do I. <laughs> Right, she's already in a session, so I just, she needs to leave the session is what I'm trying to, to say. Oh, she's in this room right now. Oh or yeah, in I'm the main room right here. Now. Oh great, there you are. Okay, I'll put you <laughs> in right now. Thank you. And could you throw me in that room as well, real quick? Yep. Thank you. Also, Mark and Earhart, you're, you're welcome. Uh, as she was talking, I As she was talking, she got thrown in. Sorry, that's okay, that's I, just, oh, I, I was really, just dropping I in to say hi. Don't I was know what Emma was say about to say. I'll give you guys a thumbs up and then I'll go and do other stuff that I need to do. So I was just dropping by to say hi. Oh, hi, Mark. Hi, it's been awesome a while. Workshop. Samantha, do you want to be in room four as well? Um, I'm going to just hop around the breakout rooms. I'm a co host, so I should be able to move myself. Yes, I'm gonna you should. Okay. Look at how the different rooms are doing Miro board wise. 
perfect. It's Sorry for the confusion. Wonderful. It's always a little crazy whenever people like don't accept sometimes and it's like crazy. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. We're working with breakout rooms and with a big group is hard. Okay. Sorry. And Thank I missed the, the broadcasting. So I'll start to send that message. The time for stuff. Ye to correct. Yes, that would be perfect. Okay, if you could, wait, let's see. If you could move the person in room three to a room with some other people in it, that'd be great. Yeah. And it also looks like room five is yeah, wide. Yeah, just moving them to five and I can. Oh, perfect. And it looks like we have a couple more people, so I'll have them join. Do you want to just orient them, um, either Arla or Samantha, just to let them know what we're doing? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, hi, everybody that just joined. Uh, we're currently in a Miro board that Sam just sent to the chat, uh, working on an exercise um, to kind of brainstorm some ideas for ways to get involved in um, Pint in, or Pit, sorry. Um, so I think that we'll move you to a breakout room and then I can help you get started on that. Great, I'll put Sophia in on room five where we have a couple op open options. Okay, great. Um, let's see. And I guess we can just put Chris Joseph and Samaline into their own breakout room, like a new room. Mm -hmm. Samaline is helping um, on the tech side. Oh, and, okay. Uh, Chris and Joseph, you should have seen something that pops up on your screen to prompt you to, to move rooms. Um, if you haven't responded to that already, I'm going to go ahead and temporarily move you to into another room and then back into your attended room. Or, or Chris, it looks like if you hit the three uh, dots on the bottom that says more, you should be able to hit join breakout room. I think that's only for co-hosts. Okay. There you go. It looks like. Perfect. And something I just noticed that I don't know if it, we're able Real, to stop wait, it wait, now. Soon. Real it's, fast. Can you send out the step three? Um, Step three. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry, Sam. No, you're good. I was about to say it says the breakout rooms are closing in eight minutes and twenty five seconds. Is there a way to turn that off without closing all the rooms and reopening? Hmm. Hmm. Let me check. Sorry. I'm gonna check on another breakout room. So it looks like this was preset. Um, here's what I would recommend, just because it's preset. I can recreate these rooms very easily now that we have everything set and like people aren't coming in and out like they used they were before. So we can bring everyone in and then we can automatically have it um, not with a timer. Okay, perfect. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. It's- No worries. I, I don't own this meeting. <laughs> like it's on someone else's account. And so I'm not sure they might've changed the settings because I did not definitely did not set a time. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm just looking at the time before I hop into a different room um, of when the next thing is supposed to be sent. So I'm gonna pull it up. I'm trying to think. You sent the last broadcast message about like twenty, like two minutes ago. I feel it sounds pretty. I did. Happy. Yeah, we're on. We're on like a two minute delay. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna hop around um, some of the breakout rooms and check in on people. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Uh, 
Okay, Arla, you went into room five. Cool. Oh, you're muted. I'll have their cameras off, but um, it looks like they're start. I know <laughs> they're starting. Um, two cool. more steps. I'm going to start popping around some other rooms. Are there any other rooms that don't have much going on? Um, room two looks pretty good. Room four should have no one. Room. I was just at, uh, Yeah, let's look at room six. Room six looks, they all look like they're doing things. I'm just going to pop around, see if anyone has any questions. Right. Yeah.
Hi. Hey, Arla, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, um, I was talking to Andreen and she was uh, telling me that, is there any chance that you could bring back the, the student show the breakout rooms and just, you know, I'll talk about it if you, but if you're on top of it, then however you feel comfortable. Um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> no, it's just that I, I, Andreen was telling me that you were having a little bit of trouble with the breakout rooms. Um, are you okay with this or? Yeah, I think we figured it out. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Then I'm really not needed here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for well, checking in. No, 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 not a problem. Please let me know. Um, I will be here connected if you need anything. Awesome. Thanks. How's it going, Emma? It's good. We just put together the addressing concerns slides and we'll be doing the last one on um, how do you know if you're creating positive impact, which is a huge question. So hard to answer. Nice. Uh, but yeah. Um, Sam and I have been popping around the breakout rooms. We have three of them. So we have breakout room two and breakout room six seem pretty active. Um, breakout room five is a little quieter. Okay. But I've been checking on them. Yes. You're like the guardian of the rooms. <laughs> it's so weird to be on this side. I have never been like the person who's just waiting for people to like go through the steps. I'm always the one going through the steps. <laughs> Now you know how your professors feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, could I hop into breakout room five then just to like see what's going on? Yeah, that would be great. Uh, I don't know if I have the power to actually change that. How do we do that? Can you go down to more and then join breakout room? Yeah, I think I need to have the breakout room be reassigned though, or I will go into the same one as before. Uh, um, Do you know what the name of our New America representative is? Oh, Angela. Angela? Okay, cool. <laughs> hey, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're there, could I be put in breakout room five? Okay, <laughs> that's fine too. <laughs> hmm. Let me let me go check with her. Uh, Sam, you're in the line, right? Samuel, I'm here, Alberto. I'm sorry. Just, I know it carries. I didn't want to say anything. Yes, I'm here. Not a problem. Um, you know who the host is? Are because I can see that um, it's New America events, but I don't know if it's Angela or someone else. It, it was Angela, but I do know that she left out. So, um, and she will have to put um, Emma into the breakout room. Oh, it's no problem. I can stick around here. This is cool too. Are you sure? Unless Alberto, can, can you do that, Alberto? No, I'm not a host in this session. Um, okay. okay. Let me ping Angela on another chat. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. And it looks like we just had someone else join. But we don't have a breakout room for you. Um, hmm. Hello, welcome. Uh, we are currently, our session is split into breakout rooms and we're waiting on our uh, technical logistics host to come back and um, start moving people around. So it'll be just a minute, but welcome. And uh, here is a link to our Miro board if you'd like to check it out.
Oh, hi. I, I see we have someone from PM1. Um, could, could someone from PM1 please give us, uh, give either Arla or me um, session, uh, sorry, host privileges? In the meantime, I think I'm going to hop back into breakout room four with Ivy just to check in. Cool. Okay, Arla, I have a host. Do you want me to move someone to a room? Um, if you could give Emma Pan um, the ability to move between rooms, is that possible? Hi, everyone. I'm sorry that I have been MIA. I was on the phone with uh, Andrine. Um, Sam, you can log off. There's not that you, we, we have it covered. You and Von Tisha are released for the evening. Okay, thank you. Yeah, have a great night. You too. And hi, Alberto, I'm sorry. I, thanks for slacking me. I had you all on, on quiet uh, while I was talking to Andrine, but okay. is there anything you need from me? I made you co-host. No, that, that is perfect. Um, we wanted, I just wanted to help Ar Arla and Emma move between sessions. Gotcha. Okay. Sounds good. I know we're coming up on uh, 539. Since we sent all of our message kind of two minutes late, um, Arla, are you okay with me sending it at 541? Um, I think that it would be better to send it on time and then just try to get back on track. I think it's okay if we shorten things up a little bit. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, one more thing. Um, does Emma have privileges to move herself between breakout rooms? Uh, she should, let me check. Okay. I'm gonna go check in with her and see if she, she was wanting to go to breakout room five, so I can see if she still wants to do that. Um, of course, I cannot change her settings unless she comes back into this room. Okay. But she's a co-host, so she should be able to. Oh, yeah. She might not have the most updated version. That's a good point. Ah, yes. Um, I'll go check in on her. Okay, sounds good. Hey, y'all. We just had this issue with a recent program, and we discovered if students don't have the most updated version, um, you can try to move them, and sometimes that will work, or sometimes they have to actually log out of the meeting and come back into it, and then you can put them in a different room. Um, that was our most recent experiences of last week. It looks like she's in room two, which was not the initial room that she was put in. So I wonder if she figured it out. Um, well, she was able to come back. Like she was in a room, remember? And then right. she came back, was talking, and then she went back into that room. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Um, Angela, if you could send out the third, or if you could actually just, just about to hit send. <laughs> awesome. Um, can you do it so that the breakout rooms like give a notice that says they're closing in 60 seconds? Yep. Okay, that would be awesome. I'll just say 60 seconds, like closing now, 60 seconds left. Mm -hmm. And I will close all rooms. Welcome back, everybody. I got to listen in on some of those, and that was awesome. Y'all are killing it. And there are so many cool things that I've seen just like popping into different Miro boards. So awesome job with that and with like having conversations about public interest tech with complete strangers. That's amazing. And um, now we're just gonna take five minutes for everybody to do a quick gallery walk and check out what other groups came up with, see some other boards and maybe have a conversation about like how that process went and whether anybody discovered or learned about something that surprised them or whether there are any takeaways from that session that you're like, now I really wanna try this um, after this workshop. So if anyone has a comment like that, feel free to like, raise your hand, uh, like physically if your video on or using the like zoom raise hand function or throw some thoughts in the chat. We would love to hear from you. And just to make it easier for people, I'm gonna send out the links for the mirror boards that had people in them in the chat, um, just cause it doesn't go in order of what like from one through whatever. Alternatively, feel free to unmute and we could see how this goes. <laughs> Well, I mean, my group in particular, we were talking about, because considering the fact that we are virtual, um, we started off talking about like sharing our different boards and like what our concerns are and our interests are. And we got into the conversation of apps because that's so accessible right now. And I'm someone who's interested in mental health. So we were like talking about, okay, like what apps, like what type of technology can be implemented like for public good? And then we got to talking about, okay, what about like actual community work and like what can we do to get ourselves into um, positions where we can, you know, once again, like implement public interest technology. And um, a, a person from my group was saying that there's different companies that may not have exactly what you want to specialize, like Nithi was explaining it a certain way, but basically just looking for opportunity and seeking it um, no matter where you are and you could probably find something that is sort of in the field or in the range of what you're trying to do. And that goes along with public interest tech as well. That is awesome. Like not just finding different mediums for people to engage with public interest tech tools, um, but also finding different, uh, different levels of opportunities for ways to engage with public interest tech and like different, maybe even different like time commitments in terms of like, like having it as a job versus like having it as something you're volunteering for. Um, yeah, all good stuff. Does anyone else have something that they would like to share? Oh, I see a question in the chat on um, essential tech skills that we would recommend students learning. 
who are interested in social impact careers? That's an awesome question. And I believe we're actually gonna be talking about that in the next part of our presentation. So I think I'm gonna hand it over to Ivy to get us started on, on answering these concerns and talking about some different public interest tech uh, stories. Cool. Um, I believe I need um, permission to share my screen or Emma, I don't know if you want to share your screen and I can just talk to that. Emma, you're muted. Cool. Um, let's see. So for the next part of the presentation, we wanted to share some examples of um, two individuals who we think their pathways into public interest technology illuminate some of the options and different ways that you can get involved. And so um, first we'd like to introduce everyone to Lauren. Um, it's on the next slide. So Lauren Chambers is a staff technology at the ACLU of Massachusetts and her background is actually in astrophysics and she has a degree in African American studies as well. And before working in her current role at the ACLU, she worked in astronomy research for a couple of years and through a personal connection, she found her current role at the ACLU. And her pathway shows that you don't necessarily have to have a CS degree or degree in design or something like that to go into a pit role. Um, pit and public interest was something that she was always interested in college, uh, but because you know it's such a growing and new field, right, um, especially when she was an undergrad, it was something that she really struggled to find opportunities in. And so it really took her a couple of years to figure out that um, astronomy wasn't for her, but also that um, the opportunity at the ACLU came up and it was an opportunity that she ended up pursuing. And Kathy is someone who is more senior level in her career. And uh, so she's already been in the tech industry for, um, for a while now. And she started off, she has a degree in computer science and started off doing product management at places like IBM, Google, a couple other for-profit um, companies before moving on to work and found uh, the United States Digital Service, which, which works on digital products for the US government. And the USDS was actually founded in the aftermath of healthcare.gov and the government realizing they needed a team to help them build digital products. And she currently runs Mozilla Builders, which is um, an organization that funds projects and organizations for uh, fixing the internet, quote unquote. And she also is a lecturer in product society and society at, at Harvard Kennedy School. And so her pathway really kind of shows that you don't have to go directly necessarily, um, directly into Pitt right out of college, you can kind of stay in the industry for a couple of years um, if, and get some experience and uh, soft skills and hard skills, build that network before moving on to maybe somewhere like government. And it also shows that some of the places that you might want to work or some of the products that you might want to see, they might not exist yet. And for example, the USDS didn't exist. And so Kathy was really part of that founding team. And so just because you might not see an opportunity right now that's like the perfect fit, it doesn't mean that it won't exist in the future or that it's something that you can't help start yourself. And just to kind of elaborate some more, those two stories were, um, were some examples of ways to get involved in PIT, but there are other different career paths and ways as well. You can have a role in civic tech, nonprofit. Um, there's kind of an assumption that all public interest tech has to be nonprofit and it doesn't necessarily. And also that if you work in big tech, you're not in PIT and that's also not necessarily true. For example, you can work as, um, as a you know, responsible lead, uh, AI lead at Google. And there are a lot of different roles cropping up in larger tech companies that have to do with public interests, like diversity, inclusion, or um, ethics and diversity, things like that. 
And um, you can work at, you know, for some example roles are being an engineer at your local city government, like the city of Austin, or being a product manager at a nonprofit like Khan Academy that um, everyone sort of knows about and um, is a product that so many people use. And so I think it really depends on, um, you know, the opportunities that you find, what you're interested in, but it's definitely not just, you know, you don't just have to work in government or at a nonprofit to be involved in PIT. And some more examples of PIT roles. Um, I think a lot of people usually think of technology and they think of the roles on the left, like your software engineer or, you know, your user researcher, data analyst. But there are a lot of new roles that are emerging, emerging, especially in the past couple of years in larger tech companies, within startups and things like that, as people are really realizing they need to understand things like policy and how to use their resources effectively and how to uh, how to appropriately um, impact communities in a way that's the most effective and inclusive. And here are some more examples of pit industries and causes. Some of these uh, causes are things you might have already be interested in um, and some you might not know as much about, but really pit affects so much and there's so many different issues and causes that you can dip your feet into and you can start learning about now. And so you don't just have to be siloed into one thing or one cause, you can really kind of explore and understand what matters to you. Yeah, and so for this next section, we wanted to address some of the issues and concerns that uh, people brought up in the beginning part of the presentation. One of the questions we saw were um, in the chat and in the mural were what skills do I need to succeed? And uh, in terms of kind of more concrete skills, uh, technical skills are obviously very important, but they also will depend on the role. A lot of organizations are looking for individuals who, um, you know, have strong technical skills and more demand right now is we're seeing in data analysis and things like web engineering, web design, um, as many organizations are looking to understand large, um, large swaths of data and understand how to use it. Um, but kind of even beyond that, higher level problem solving is really important. A lot of these organizations and companies are dealing with issues and communities that are facing challenges that aren't going to be easily solved with an app, for example, or don't have an easy solution. And so having that understanding is really important and learning to deal with, you know, real sensitive issues um, is critical. And also collaborating across teams and institutions um, a lot of organizations work with governments or work with, you know, really vulnerable communities. And so it's really important to be able to communicate and collaborate, collaborate even beyond just your own team. And even, um, oh, sorry. Um, and finally, I think um, more on the soft skills um, for someone personally, I think it's really important to align with the organization's mission. Um, recognize the privilege that you have um, and your own identity and how that um, affects the way that you impact others and also just willingness, a willingness to learn about systems of oppression. No one knows everything, but I think having that humility and willingness to learn is really important. Um, um, another it, question that we saw was finding new jobs slash gra new grad positions in PIT. And so um, I'd like to um, direct everyone to the weareimpactful.org's job board. There's a, um, Impactful has a job board of, um, that's updated regularly with, uh, with internships and uh, full-time job positions that are in PIT. And there are also a lot of civic fellowship programs like Coding It Forward, the Impact Fellowship that gets um, especially students and new grads into uh, connected with opportunities in civic tech. Um, and also we just would recommend starting early, getting, uh, getting experience in pit groups like, um, like Pi at Olin, organizations like Design for America, and volunteering at nonprofits, startups, and other organizations. It's always better to have more experience in pit earlier on. And there are so many organizations that are looking for, you know, student volunteers and help as well. And um, finally, networking is incredibly important. Um, we've heard this again and again. Um, it's always 
Um, always have those, be looking out for opportunities to have coffee chats with people, to reach out, even cold emailing on places like LinkedIn or through your own university network is, is critical because often um, within smaller organizations, having that one point of contact is what will get you through the door. Uh, and then the last question that we found was, how do you know if you're creating positive impact? And that's such a tough question. That's a question that we in Pint ask ourselves all the time. And there is not really a concrete way to answer this question. So we're going to answer it by giving you a couple more questions to think about. Um, First, some general guidance or tips for uh, thinking about creating positive impact is to think about what matters to you and then thinking about how to honor impact over intent. And so one way to try to think about what impact is versus what your the intentions are, are to think about metrics. Where's the ball? Example, oh, shoot. Where's the ball? how many people does my work impact and how many more people have access to services as a result of my work. Some questions that you can ask yourself when you're starting a project is, are, is my work affecting someone's quality of life? Who is involved in the design and the decision-making process? Who might be affected by the work that I'm doing? And could any of my work unintentionally cause harm to the people that we are designing for? And by answering these questions, we've been able to map our, our concerns to the concerns of the people that we're working for and the people who might be affected by the work that we're doing. All right, so as we wrap up, we all just wanna say thank you so much for coming and uh, Zoom applause for all of you for doing great work. Um, we have an exit survey uh, that we would love if you took a few minutes just to fill out and give us some feedback and also to report back on some of your findings in your breakout rooms. Um, and yeah, thank you all for coming. <laughs> yeah, and the last part of the Miro after the breakout rooms has also the link to the exit survey and a link to our slides, which I'm going to send right now um, in the chat um, because there are uh, more resources after that you will have. And I guess in our last three minutes, if anyone has any last questions for us, feel free to ask them 